Si vous aimez les films policiers, les James Bond ou à la manière de James Bond, agent secret fort célèbre, eh bien je vous conseille de regarder Coup de Maître au service de sa majesté britannique. Alors les principaux protagonistes, c'est Michele Lupo, un metteur en scène italien qui a réalisé ce film, il se défend très très bien. Et puis vous avez également Richard Harrison dans le rôle de l'acteur de Siri B qui devient agent secret. C'est un acteur que vous avez vu dans des dizaines de films qui ont été projetés en France, c'est un très très bon acteur. Richard Harrison a en effet tourné dans quelques 200 films, dont plus d'une centaine en tant que vedette. Peplum, western, film d'espionnage, polar, film de guerre, il a été le héros de tous les grands genres du cinéma populaire. Nous l'avons rencontré à Rome, sa ville d'adoption, où il a vécu les plus grands moments de sa carrière. L'occasion de revenir sur le parcours, avec ses hauts et ses bas, d'une des dernières grandes figures du cinéma de série B. C'est toi, Lucius, qui sera empereur. Non, je ne suis pas préparé à une telle tâche. Je suis habitué à mes légions, à combattre et à vivre avec mes légionnaires. Je ne sais rien d'autre. I was the type of leading man they wanted. I had a, I mean, working in the gym, I had a decent body. I never wanted to have an overbuilt body. I wanted to have a sporting body. I wanted to have a, a nice body, but an actress body. I didn't want to have a Hercules body. That was never my intention or what I wanted. I think it was true that being slightly physically different, it was to our advantage. Although I must say that many Italians who saw these films thought I was Italian. You know, when they think of a Roman uh, soldier or gladiator, they always think of me, <laughs> which I thought was funny. It was still rough and tumble. I mean, you had to take care of yourself, and I don't think I did too much. I put myself in their hands, and they weren't always caring about me. I remember one time on the Isette Gladiatore, there was a scene where all the soldiers throw their spears at me. And the spears hit me, boom, boom, boom. But because I'm, for whatever reason, they admired me as a hero, they don't kill me. But when they did that and the scene was over, I, everybody was saying, oh my God, oh my God. And everything was, everybody was so excited. I said, well, what's wrong? I, everything's perfect, the spears. What well, happened that one of the spears had broken. There was little wire lines. And one of the spears that was supposed to go on my left side crossed my face and went on my right side and stuck in the wall. In other words, I'd have been killed immediately. It was a matter of an inch or two. It crossed the side of my face. And this happened so many times in these films. I was just pure luck I wasn't killed in these films. The swords were real metal, and as you worked with them, it was like a saw. I mean, they were all chipped. So when you hit and they did cut you, it was really cut badly. Many times I'd look in the eyes of the other actor and I said, he's going to cut me in the head. He's going to hit me. He's going to hurt me. I knew it beforehand. His eyes, also I'd see the, the eyes, the black of the eyes would get very large. I said, uh oh, here we go. Whack. Right away, hospital again, more stitches. Happened a lot of times. The other thing is, I hate to say, and uh, uh, I hope it's not, I don't think it's that way anymore. Some of the directors in that, they would tell me, all right, 
then they'd say, do this scene and then throw this hatchet into the middle of this mob. I'd say, all right. So I would do the scene. And when it was time to throw the hatchet, naturally, I stopped. They said, what did you stop for? I, I stopped because I came as far as I could go. And I can't throw this metal hatchet into the mob. They said, why not? Go ahead. I said, what if I hit somebody? Oh, they're only extras. Arrivé en Italie à 24 ans, en plein âge d'or du péplum, Richard Harrison en devient très vite l'une des vedettes. Au même titre que ses compatriotes, Steve Reeves, Ed Furry, Mark Forrest ou son ami Gordon Mitchell, Richard devient populaire auprès du grand public et mène un train de vie confortable. I started really enjoying the life here. <coughs> And I have to say, I was privileged because I, for here I was making extremely good money. I had three homes in Italy. I built a beautiful home in uh, Marbella, Spain, on the beach, overlooking at the mountains of Africa, Gibraltar. I had a nice apartment in Madrid. I had, you know, I had Rolls Royces and Ferraris and things like that. Max. I knew all the big directors here, even though I didn't work with them. I knew them, I talked with them, I laughed with them and enjoyed being with them, but I never worked with them. On m'a dit que vous étiez acteur. Il faut croire que vous n'avez pas réussi, ça c'est vous qui le dites. J'ai toujours très bien travaillé, je me suis débrouillé. Il solo motivo per cui lui non ha mai superato il muro del suono passando dalla serie B, che ne era cosciente di essere in serie B, per ambire nella serie A, è sempre data dal fatto che tutto questo sacro fuoco dell'arte non c'era, perché probabilmente lui intravedeva nella eventualità di fare tun tun al portone importante, sarebbe stato un declassamento, un declassamento eh, dal punto di vista finanziario. Après les rôles de gladiateur invincible, l'acteur américain troque son glaive et ses sandales contre un colt et un Stetson et tient la vedette du premier western Spaghetti. Le western est un genre en vogue. Après Duel au Texas, les producteurs Papi et Colombo proposent à Richard de tourner dans un nouveau western. Il a en effet tapé dans l'œil d'un réalisateur alors méconnu. Well, they said this director he wants you to do the part. And they said the name and uh, of Leone and Leone had done one film beforehand and I hadn't seen it but it wasn't successful. And I said, how's the script? And they said, oh, not very good. And I said, uh, it was a longer film. I think they even offered me less money. And I said, why should I do it? Why should I do a film? You say the script's not good, a longer film and uh, less money and everything. And they said, well, he wants you. I said, no, no, no. And then all of a sudden, this fellow started following me around. And I didn't know it was Leone. And he was following me. In fact, he came on the set and he'd spy on me. What are you doing? There's just one bullet in this gun, Jefferson, and you can't buy it. Innanzitutto Sergio Leone ancora non aveva avuto modo di farsi conoscere e quindi avventura per avventura dovendo scegliere fra due registi sconosciuti e la valutazione andava soltanto sulla questione economica su un regista che dava 20.000 dollari e contro un altro che ne dava 40.000 o la produzione ovviamente accompagnata con, con il relativo regista tutto qui anyway i didn't do the film and uh, papi and colombo called me up and they said we have a name three names of actors and agency i looked at them and any of them would have been all right but i said 
I would pick Clint Eastwood because he did a TV series and at least he knows how to ride a horse because a lot of American actors came here and they weren't very good riders. So they took him, the rest is history. Ce choix de carrière fera plus tard déclarer à Richard « Peut-être que ma plus grande contribution au cinéma est de ne pas avoir fait pour une poignée de dollars et d'avoir recommandé Clint pour le rôle. » Jeune homme, dès demain, je fais un papier sur vous. Après les péplums et les westerns, les jours se succèdent et Richard Harrison fait toujours partie des acteurs de série B incontournables. Polar, film d'espionnage, film de guerre. Richard touche à tout mais enchaîne les tournages sans vraiment se soucier de la qualité. I was very aware. I never fooled myself. A couple of times when I thought I had a good film, I worked very hard and uh, put a lot of effort into it. Otherwise, I have to admit, I walked through the film. During this time, uh, I'd get several scripts a week, and I wasn't very professional because I would look to see, oh, where's this film going to be shot? Is it going to be shot in a country I'd never shot in before? Because I wanted to go, hey, but it was, and I didn't pay attention to the script very much or how good the director was. And, uh, I don't like to shoot at night. So at night, I would look and see how many shots are there are going to be at night, and there'd be no shots. Oh, great, I'm, uh, I'm interested in this film. Four or five shots at night, no, I don't want to do this film. Mais le cinéma populaire ne rivalise plus avec Hollywood. Pour maintenir son train de vie confortable, Richard doit quitter l'Italie. I was aware, but because of the Gladiator going down and then war films and the Westerns and the 007, they'd always start big and then they would just dwindle down. So I thought, well, you know, there'll be another genre come along, another type of film come along, it'll be big and it'll go down again. But it didn't happen this time. All of a sudden, uh, America started getting stronger and I, Hollywood became strong again. And it didn't have that much to offer. Italy wasn't any more international. Je suis si heureux de te revoir, commissaire Santini. Tu n'es qu'un lâche. Tu as l'arrogance des lâches. Je voudrais te voir sans armes et sans otages. As the cinema was drying up here in Italy, my biggest problem was I had quite big expenses and all of a sudden the money wasn't flowing in. It stopped. So that's the reason I did do those very, very, very bad films. Big mistake, but I did them, and done is done. Philippe, je sais où tu te caches. Viens ici que je te bute, enculé. Ta gueule. Viens ici, sale enculé. Salaud. I should have probably not continued some of the films I did. I should have stopped immediately, but I wasn't wise, and so I continued each time, doing more and more. And there again, it was to keep the money flowing in, because it was money needed. I brought money home. And then I really started hating the cinema. I started hating anything to do with acting. And that was, then I, I just was so disgusted. I really felt bad. De la Yougoslavie à l'Afrique du Sud, de l'Iran aux Philippines, Richard Harrison devient un véritable mercenaire du cinéma bis. Mais dans ses productions du bout du monde, les dangers ne sont pas toujours du domaine de la fiction. I actually offered stupidly to do things where they had stuntmen there that were actually being paid to do these things. Sentiva meglio quando lui veramente faceva l'azione, quando si buttava dal secondo piano, quando faceva molta azione, lui si sentiva bene, più che perché era quasi un come uh, una sfida. People do things in cinema they wouldn't do otherwise. They do stupid things. Yeah, I saw people burned very badly. They say shove a big flaming uh, bowl of oil and somebody's supposed to jump away and they didn't jump away and then their whole body was on fire and they were burned halfway to death. And uh, 
things like that. I mean, I, things like people looking and looking inside of a gun and pulling the trigger and then blowing their eyes out. Vous n'êtes que des maniaques, et c'est pour une chose aussi stupide que j'ai dû courir tous ces risques. Assieds-toi. J'en ai marre de ces histoires. Prends en une, ça te calmera. Non, fous-moi la paix. Another time, uh, George Ubaldi, the master of arms, he was shoving the wrong uh, blank into the gun. And he said, okay, here's the gun. I said, no, I don't want this. And he said, what's wrong? Are you afraid? And I said, yes, I'm afraid. It was like, you know, if, how courageous you are. And I said, shoot the gun. He shot the gun and blew his hand half off. Oh, God, I can think of so many films where I was hurt and so many stupid things. For example, when I really hurt myself badly, and I've had several back operations, there was a chain. I had to swing from one tower to the next. And I always was very good. I said, look, make sure this chain will hold my weight. So I went to my dressing room, I came back, and I said, did you test it out? They said, yes. So I did it, and right in the middle of the swing, I'm, I'm over two stories high on cement. I fall, and my back, I broke several vertebrae, and I've, I've had terrible operations, and I've been in pain ever since. What did they do? They took somebody half my size and, and had him swing on the chain, you know, just, I mean, it's not very intelligent, I'm sorry. You know, the whole idea is to do things with intelligence, but I saw so many stupid things, and I used to think, my God, do they just half the time look for stupid people that work in cinema? You know? When we take up a mission, we must succeed or die. Ninja the Protector. An evil ninja challenges a righteous ninja. Only a ninja can defeat a ninja. Victime d'avoir pris à la légère les choix de ses films, Richard joue dans des productions de plus en plus médiocres, aux Philippines notamment, puis à Hong Kong, où sa route croise celle d'un duo d'escrocs, le producteur Joseph Lai et le réalisateur Godfrey Ho. Ce qui ne devait être au départ qu'un film alimentaire de plus s'avérera lourd de conséquences. Ninja the Protector, where greed and passions give rise to wholesale and gruesome slaughter. I started shooting, and then we finished, and I left. And the first thing I knew was when I get a call from a German producer. He said, Richard, how could you do this to me? And I said, what did I do to you? He said, I bought 10 of your films there, or something like that, uh, because you're in the films. And, and uh, I said, I didn't make 10 films. I did one film for him now. And I, don't, I have to admit, I never got to even see the script. Well, of course, what he did, they, they took, they bought, I guess, any old film and just stuck 30 seconds of me in the film and say, Richard Harrison in, starring Richard Harrison. Richard Harrison is victim of a véritable escroquerie cinematographic, the two in one. The scene behind me illustrates perfectly the methods crapulous of the two in one. Il s'agit ici de faire dialoguer Richard Harrison avec un acteur qui a joué dans un film totalement différent une dizaine d'années auparavant. Évidemment, on redouble le dialogue original de Richard Harrison en anglais pour essayer désespérément de donner une cohérence à l'ensemble. La même scène pouvant être redoublée plusieurs fois pour être mise dans des films différents. Go to hell. Cette méthode crapuleuse n'est certes pas nouvelle, mais le duo Godfrey Ho, Joseph Lai la poussera à son paroxysme, arnaquant d'autres acteurs occidentaux et inondant le marché mondial de la vidéo avec leurs produits. Ninja Dragon, Ninja Terminator, Golden Ninja Warrior, The Ultimate Ninja, The Ninja Squad. Des produits au titre aussi évocateur que Ninja Terminator, l'enfer des ninjas au Full Metal Ninja. Actually, my son Sebastian bought one of the copies and gave me one. I looked at it for like 10 seconds or 10 minutes maybe, and I just threw it away. I, I was so disgusted. What I saw was something that made no sense whatsoever. They dressed me, I think they got the clothes from some cheap secondhand store, and I looked like a, an American bum anyway in it, and, and nothing made any sense. And, it was just bad, bad, bad. Lai and Ho, I thought they were decent people in that. Obviously, they were the crooks behind the whole thing. When I was there, they had a little teeny editing room, and they were there 
working always together. They were two complices. They were two thieves in the night, as far as I was concerned. They must have laughed like crazy about me because I was completely unaware of what was going on. They must have thought it was very funny. My friendship is the most important thing I have, and they betrayed it, so I have nothing good to say about them. They're disgusting people. They did disgusting films. I guess they made money from it, you know. But then prostitutes can make money too, so I guess it doesn't mean much. I said, nobody will ever hear of these films. I mean, they'll never come out, certainly not out of that country. I thought maybe they'd be shown in that country, but not in the rest of the world. Unfortunately, these seem to be the films who are most known. And I mean, it's a terrible uh, way to be remembered. I mean, not that I want to be remembered, but I mean, at least I'd like to remember something better than this. This was the worst of the worst of the worst. I think it will go down in history as some of the worst films ever made. Your technique is still very good. And so is yours. You want the Golden Ninja Warrior all for yourself. Look at this. Yes, that's my ninja star. Right? It's my ninja star. This is yours. I should have checked on these people before I ever said I'd work with them. Uh, you work uh, in the uh, sewer and you get dirty. And that's what I did. I worked in the sewer without knowing it. And these were sewer people, bad people, disgusting people. And I got dirty and I paid the price for it. The price was I wouldn't work as an actor anymore. I didn't want ever to work again. When he realized that he wasn't treated well, he was forced. He didn't want to be an actor anymore for him. So he said, just stop. Lui non ha sofferto assolutamente di lasciare questo mondo, non ha avuto nessun rimpianto e questo te la dice lunga perché in fondo, come ho detto prima, lui non lo faceva per, per la grande passione. Starring Richard Harrison. If I gave pleasure, it makes me happy. I'm glad for that part of the thing, but at the same time, I know, you know, they were, they were just nice, clean little films and they had their part in history and they had their part in the moment, uh, and you know, I'm not ashamed of them, but I'm not happy about it either. I mean, I'm, I'm happy that I, they gave me a better life, and I'm happy that people enjoyed them, but I'm not, uh, I'm, I'm nothing to brag about, you know. Lui, uh, come ha detto prima, lei, che mh, guarda un po' dall'alto quello che sì, non ho fatto tanto, non ho fatto così, così. Uh, forse un atteggiamento, lui sa che ha fatto. I've been very lucky, you know, the moments that were, let's say, a little difficult, it's easy, I cancel from my mind, but the good moments I remember, and I was very fortunate, I enjoy what I did, I, I met wonderful people, I've traveled a lot, I, uh, I think also I, I was more interested, you know many actors are interested in being other people. I'm always amazed that, about that. I was more interested in finding out who I was, who I am, and I'm still trying to find out who I am. I enjoyed working when I felt there was, the film had a little substance to it. Actually you know, when I knew, I, I could tell in the first half hour of a film if the film wasn't going to be so good. And right away I'd lose my interest. <laughs> But if I thought the film had any chance of being a better film, I got enthusiastic and I was happy. And actually it made my whole being happier. So I, I've had a good life and uh, I appreciate it and I enjoy now what I do. And uh, I have no complaints. I can only say thank you and, uh, to this world. And, and uh, I've enjoyed life so far and I hope to 
improve. I hope to. I always am studying. I'm always trying to learn. I have a lot to learn. A lot, lot to learn. <laughs> and uh, I hope I'm given some time to, to continue enjoying life. I'm sure we're going to do better next time. Right. Let's go have a beer. Oh, that's a good idea.